So uh, we wanted to create a brand that really didn't compromise. We feel a lot of there's some um, uh, socially responsible brands that really rely a lot on their story or their social impact. And then there's the luxury or premium brands that don't really have any kind of transparency or any kind of story about what they're doing. And we really wanted to create a brand and a product that didn't compromise on either side. We wanted to create really a legitimate premium quality product done by hand that also had a deep and meaningful social impact. Our simple social impact really manifests itself in our packaging. So these are our, our handmade uh, shoe boxes in Ethiopia with uh, with artisans there. It's actually 100% uh, eco-friendly, so it's used with recycled material and uh, a, the fibers of a false banana tree, essentially. So they, they, they produced this for us. We worked with them for a couple of months. They used to just make paper and we found a way for them to engineer a shoebox for us. It's a lot more expensive than traditional shoeboxes, but we love it because it tells the story of African craft, but in a really cool, responsible way. And then the shoes then go into uh, uh, organic cotton shoe bag, uh, and we source the, the fabric for our shoe bags from a small indigenous uh, NGO in Ethiopia that works with, uh, with HIV victims that have a hard time finding traditional work. It's great to be able to plug them directly into our supply chain. So as, as we grow, uh, they grow and they're able to hire more people and have a, have a bigger impact as well. And on top of that, we just have a lot of transparency. We pay a really genuine livable wage. Uh, our staff has an ownership in the product. So, uh, so they, get a, they get a profit share from, from whatever we make as well. And at the very end, we actually have uh, our staff sign every shoe box that comes out of our workshop. So it gives them like a sense of ownership uh, on the product and also gives that we always wanted to create a bridge between the makers and the buyers for our customers so you can know exactly who made it they sign it right there uh, and our staff love doing that as well because I think it's almost like I mean it genuinely is like artwork you know and this is like the artist signing off you know on his painting uh, at the end of the work yeah you know I think throughout history we don't do the best job in Africa of remi remembering our uh, our political or, or, or historical figures uh, fondly. We tend to remember their flaws more. So in honor of trying to pay homage to them, we, we name all our shoes after significant African historical figures. So this is named the Nkrumah, after Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, and it's a classic kind of silhouette. Joao does a much better job about talking to them than I do. So this style is like a classic, um, it's a classic uh, mid-cut silhouette. It's a deconstructed shoe. It kind of pays homage to some of the classic silhouettes from back in the day that have in influenced my design work. So that's in Krumo. The, the, another style is um, Biko. This is a new style we're going to be launching on the, the pre-order campaign. Minimal design, so it, it lets the materials do the talking. It's got like a nice, it's a nice mixture of uh, leather and suede on the same shoes. So there's nice little textural differences and just really comfortable shoes. Yeah made from the best leather around. It's not techn technically reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's like very familiar classic silhouettes just made from the best raw materials in the world, you know, and subtle de designs that let that raw material do the talking. A lot of my design work is um, quite influenced by Japanese um, streetwear and just Jap Japanese culture in general. Um, the Japanese um, put a lot of emphasis on craft so you, for example, they take a classic button down and they make it from the best material. And it's all about the little subtle details. So one of my favorite Japanese designers is Hiroki Nakamura. He's the guy who set up um, VizVim and he's been a, a big influence in, in my, my design aesthetic. So this is the, the Biko in our brown colorway. It has the same kind of textural uh, touches with the suede and the leather again. Um, another nice detail is the little uh, NZ logo in Amharic, which is what we speak in Ethiopia. It's the ancient indigenous language to Ethiopia. Uh, so that's NZ uh, in Amharic. And again, that same classic silhouette, but amazing, amazing raw material that actually like takes to your foot, you know, as you, the more you wear it, the more comfortable it gets. So this is us, um, this is our slip on style and it's, uh, it's, it's made from, has a suede vamp and a leather quarter piece. The idea behind NZ, the NZ brand is that they're sneakers that kind of sit between, their shoes that sit between sneakers and um, dress shoes. The shoes are pretty versatile. I mean, you can, wear, you, can, you can wear these with shorts or you can wear it with a suit. Wear it to work, wear it to the club, or just wear it, you know, going out. So that was the idea to create something that was yeah. 
that was was versatile and kind of kind of became a staple in the wardrobe.